Well, hey guys, welcome back to part two of skincare power duos. If you missed part one, where have you been? We are talking ingredient pairings and in skincare that yield pretty robust results in comparison to using either ingredient alone. And today I am breaking down six powerful combos that you need to know about in your skincare routine. Also, if you wanna know about skincare ingredient pairings that sabotage results, you need to check out my video on that very topic. I will link it down below in the description box box along with part one of this video. All right, let's get into it. Number one power duo that is slept on is Systamine plus Adapalene for hyperpigmentation, sunspots, age spots, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. These two ingredients address hyperpigmentation, but from different angles. And when it comes to tackling dark spots, that is the best approach to get the best outcome. Systamine is a powerful antioxidant that inhibits melanin pigment production by inhibiting some of the machinery, the enzymes that go into building melanin pigment. In other words, cystamine makes it so that less melanin pigment is produced. Adapalene, on the other hand, is a third generation topical retinoid, FDA approved for the treatment of acne, which as a side note, often heals with stubborn hyperpigmentation. How does a retinoid help address hyperpigmentation? Well, adapalene helps improve skin cell turnover, cellular renewal, ultimately hastening the clearance of pigmentation from the epidermis. It also suppresses inflammation that drives pigment production. Adapalene also helps facilitate the dispersion of melanin pigment granules so that you don't get these clumps of pigment that lead to discoloration. So how do you use these ingredients together? Well, this is a case where you're not gonna encounter a product with both of them together and the cystamine is used in a short contact approach. I suggest using the cystamine in the morning. How do you use it? You wanna start by applying cystamine to clean dry skin. Apply a thin layer of the cystamine to the affected areas and leave it on for 15 minutes and trust me you can go multitask make your coffee I mean it's morning you have a lot of stuff to do I'm sure and then when you come back into the bathroom you're just going to rinse it off and wash your face as you normally do and apply moisturizer if necessary importantly you want to make sure that you apply your sunscreen which if you're trying to tackle hyperpigmentation sunscreen every day is a must in part one of this video we talked about the value as a side note of sunscreens paired with iron oxide so again, make sure you don't miss part one. Adapalene, on the other hand, is applied at nighttime. Adapalene is applied on clean, dry skin. It can be applied onto damp skin, though, if you've been using it a while. This will enhance penetration. I do suggest starting slowly with these ingredients, maybe trying using them a couple of nights a week for the first couple of weeks and bumping up gradually to a daily as tolerated. Power duo number two, zinc pyrithione plus sulfur. So this power duo is amazing for those of you who deal with a condition known as seborrheic dermatitis or if you deal with something called malassezia folliculitis, otherwise known as fungal acne. These are skin conditions that largely are driven by excessive oil production, sebum, seborrhea is the medical term for that, as well as overgrowth of a yeast that naturally lives on everyone's skin, malassezia. Zinc pyrithione, which is found in anti-dandruff shampoos, another condition, as a side note, driven by malassezia yeast. This ingredient it reduces the yeast and can help clear this up. So how do you use it? I suggest washing your face with a zinc pyrithione shampoo, or they do make zinc pyrithione cleansing bars. You can do this at nighttime as part of your nighttime skincare routine. Then pair it with sulfur. Sulfur is anti-inflammatory and helps to exfoliate away some of those flakes. And sulfur has antimicrobial properties as well. Together, this pairing can help calm down the redness, reduce the scaling, and can help clear up those little fungal acne, aka malassezia folliculitis, itchy bumps, which are not the same, as a side note, as acne. Totally different. They are not acne, they're folliculitis. Now, sulfur and zinc pyrithione shampoo can be a bit drying, so after you remove these, make sure that you put a moisturizer on. Now the sulfur is applied as a mask in most cases. Check out one that I recommend is the De La Cruz Sulfur Mask. You can use it as a leave-on treatment overnight or you can just put it on, leave it on for 20 minutes and then rinse it off. Again, make sure you put a moisturizer on afterwards. It can be a bit drying. And a word of warning, if you've never used sulfur, it does smell a little bit like eggs. All right, this is one of my favorite beauty hacks, this power duo right here. It is pairing your hyaluronic acid serum with petroleum jelly on your lips for lip plumping, lip hydration, soft, smooth lips, free of the flaky, peely skin, help calm
calm down and heal those painful cracks. How does this work? Well, hyaluronic acid helps to improve water content in the skin. Lips need all the help they can get. They are constantly being challenged to lose water and that drop in water content drives a lot of the irritation that people experience, a lot of the dry flakiness on the lips and it enhances penetration of things that further irritate the lips. Petroleum jelly is an occlusive barrier. So applying that on top of the hyaluronic acid really helps seal in that moisture and importantly acts as a lip protectant, trapping the water in and protecting the lips from irritants like saliva, which will dry out your lips. This is something that's really easy to do and most people sleep on it because they may be using a hyaluronic acid serum but not really bothering to put it on their lips and you don't need very much, just a tiny little drop and then follow it up with petroleum jelly. Now, petroleum jelly alone will get the job done. It will help improve water content because it's going to slow down the evaporation of water with consistent use. It really is the workhorse of this power duo, but hyaluronic acid can yield a bit more of that instant gratification of the plumpness, the smoothness, the softness. Power duo number four is hyaluronic acid plus retinol. So you guys know retinol is a cosmetic ingredient that helps with fine lines, dry rough skin texture. It can help clear out some discoloration, hyperpigmentation. It's the cosmetic version of the prescription retinoids. Hyaluronic acid, like I said, is a humectant. It helps improve water content in the skin to moisturize the skin in the long run. If you've ever used retinol though, you know it can lead to a lot of dryness, peeling, and irritation. Guess what? Pairing it with hyaluronic acid helps reduce that by improving water retaining abilities in the skin. So if you're using a hyaluronic acid serum, you could apply that first and then follow it with your retinol. However, many retinol products already have hyaluronic acid formulated into them. For example, the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream I have been recommending for years and years and years, the fragrance-free one. I swear it has this instant plumping, hydrating effect and it likely has to do with the hyaluronic acid which helps to improve the dryness, the irritation that one might experience from their very effective stabilized retinol that's slow release, sustained action. That's a great formula with hyaluronic acid. Also, hyaluronic acid paired with retinol also shines for attempting, I will say, to improve the appearance of stretch marks. Hyaluronic acid and retinol are two ingredients that show promise for improving the appearance of stretch marks. So when paired together, it is a logical pursuit to try and improve the final appearance of stretch marks or at the very least mitigate their formation, likely by improving hydration in the skin and maybe through improving collagen production, you help make the skin more resilient to stretch and overall reduce the likelihood of stretch mark formation. Stretch marks are a challenge. People make them sometimes no matter what they do, but that is a logical pairing that has some evidence to back it up. Power duo number five is for those of you who deal with post-inflammatory erythema. All right, we've already talked about post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, the dark marks, but some people's skin heals with a stubborn red mark. This is the pairing that you should consider, licorice root plus azelaic acid. So licorice root has a variety of anti-inflammatory compounds in it and is established for being a botanic extract that helps to calm down redness. Azelaic acid in the prescription forms is actually an FDA approved acne treatment and an FDA approved rosacea treatment and it's used as well for the treatment of hyperpigmentation. That aside, you also can encounter cosmetic forms of azelaic acid without a prescription, not as strong of a percentage, but can be helpful for calming down redness. Azelaic acid has anti-inflammatory properties, antimicrobial properties. It helps to reduce acne breakouts and it really can help address the redness quite a bit. If you're someone who deals with both redness and hyperpigmentation, this power duo also makes a whole lot of sense. Look for a formula that has licorice root in it or consider it because that power duo together can really work magic for calming down and clearing up the redness. Redness can be very stubborn to fade and a note about fading stubborn redness is that whatever the primary event that led to the redness, if that is active and ongoing and poorly controlled, you gotta, you gotta tackle that. So if it's acne breakouts, yeah, you gotta tackle the acne breakouts because so long as that inflammation keeps coming into the skin, you're getting more breakouts. It's gonna, it's gonna fuel stubborn redness and topicals are not gonna be able to get in there and help you out. All right, we are coming into 
dry skin season before you know it. Some of you, I'm sorry, live in places that are already cold. You probably already are turning on your heaters perhaps, in which case that's going to draw water out of your skin and make your skin dry, can aggravate itch. So a power duo for tackling really stubborn dry skin, especially on the body, is going to be ceramides plus urea. So urea does a lot for dry skin. It is a humectant, so it helps with water retention in the skin, but it also helps to dissolve and gently exfoliate the buildup of dry, rough skin. And that's very helpful because once that is addressed, barrier function starts to improve. Your skin starts to be able to work better in terms of retaining moisture. Now the ceramides come in there because they are lipids naturally found in skin's outermost layer. They're part of your skin barrier, but in dry skin conditions, such as a dermatitis and with age ceramide production declines and is a contributing factor for the development of dryness. Applying ceramides in a moisturizer is thought to help clue your skin into making more of its own ultimately helping to support healing of the skin barrier and of course the downstream effect of that is skin that retains moisture better and is not as dry and flaky. So this is a great power duo and a lot of moisturizers that I recommend have this in it and you can also find facial moisturizers that have this pairing as well. So it's not just for body skin. If you have dry, rough skin texture on the face, keratosis pilaris, this is a great pairing to consider. I also suggest considering using this for your hands as well and for stubborn dry heels. This power duo can really be amazing for tackling those stubborn patches of dry, rough skin. If you really, really, really want to get the most out of this pairing, consider applying it under occlusion. Really helps drive in those hydrating factors in into the skin, trap them on the skin so that they really can go to work. For example, apply these to the body after showering, after you get out of the shower at night, and then cover with some old pajamas that you don't care about so much um, because inevitably some of the product will get on your pajamas, but it'll also get back on your skin, stay on your skin. The pajamas provide occlusion to drive that in there. And I mean, that's a go-to actually recommendation um, for patients with eczema to do to, to cover up the moisturizer because that's that occlusion really yields better results than just using the moisturizer by itself. All right, guys, so those are the six power duos. To recap, combining the right ingredients, it can pay off dividends, and it can really elevate your skincare routine. You don't necessarily need to buy and use multiple products in order to get the right pairing. There's a good chance that the products you are already using have this pairing. So if that's the case, great. You don't have to buy or change anything. You just have that inside that perhaps helps motivate you to continue you using them. Nothing appears overnight when we're talking about the skin. Ingredients take time to work. Patience is key. So knowing how the ingredients work, I think can motivate you to continue to use the product, finish it up so that you don't waste any money and you get the best results out of your investment. I hope you guys found this video informative, educational. I know you all like these Power Duo videos. If you missed the first one, it will be linked in the description box and in a pinned comment. Everything I mentioned in today's video will also be down there as well as my video on skincare combinations to avoid. Speaking of which, I'm going to link part one on the end slide. If you just want to tap on the thumbnail, it'll take you right to part one in case you missed it. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.